as soon as you read this problem, you feel that, hey, this is such a direct question and maybe with some thinking and some manipulations, I will be able to arrive at an answer, right? But what happens when you try to solve it? You start running into problems and you realize how tricky this is. It becomes even interesting when you want to target the order of n time complexity. How do you solve it? This is what makes this question so popular and it has been asked in a lot of coding interviews. Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Airbnb, you just name it. So what do we do about it? In this video, I will tell you how you can approach it efficiently. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start from the brute force approach and then try to optimize it. We will see what were the shortcomings and then work upon them to find an optimal solution. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First things first, let us make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an unsorted array of integers nums, right? And you have to return me just the length of the longest consecutive element sequence. So what is the longest consecutive element sequence? If you have any sequence like 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So all of these elements are consecutive to each other, correct? So given an array, there could be multiple such sequences, right? There could be sequences like 1, 2, 3. There could be sequences like 100, 101, 102. And since this array has integers, the sequence could also be minus 2, minus 1, 0, then 1 and then 2. The only thing to notice over here is that all of these elements will be separated by one, right? So given an array, there could be many such sequences and you have to return me the length of the longest such sequence. To understand it better, let us take up our sample test case. In this test case, you can see that the longest sequence I have available is one, two, three, and then four, right? And what is its length? This length is four, correct? So for test case number one, four will be your answer. Now, there could also be a case when your given array has more than one sequence. For example, I have this test case number two, right? In this test case, what are the sequences that I have available? So I have one sequence, zero, one, and two, and I have one more sequence in this array. The other sequence is 47, 48, 49, and then 50, right? If you look at the length, this sequence has a length of three, and this sequence has a length of four right? So for test case number two, once again, four will be your answer. So notice that a array could have many such sequences. And in this sequence, it is not necessary that elements are arranged in a proper fashion. You can see that 47 came later and 50 came first, right? So given such kind of a problem structure, you have to tell me just the length of the longest sequence that you can find. So now if you understand the problem statement better, feel free to try the problem once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. A good developer always tries to come up with a brute force solution first. That is because a brute force solution first of all tells you that, okay, a problem can be solved and then it gives you some headroom so that, okay, you can optimize upon some of the thoughts that you're working upon. So how do you start solving this? Let us say I have this sample array with me and you have to find out the sequences, right? So when you're finding sequences, first approach that comes to my mind is, okay, I pick up the element 100, right? And now what I will do is I will traverse through my array and I will try to find out what is the next element that is 101. I traverse through my array and I find another element that is 101. So I found some sequence, correct? But you cannot stop over here. Now you have to find out if 102 exists. So once again, you will start from the beginning and traverse all the way to the end. And you'll see that, okay, I cannot find 102. So that is where you stop. This is the first sequence that you can find just using the element 100, right? Now what you're going to do is you will take this pointer and move to the next location. That is four, right? Once again, you need to search for five. So you will start from the beginning and then go all the way to the end. You don't see a five over here, right? You will repeat this step. You will go into 101 and now you will try to find 102. Once again, you don't find anything. You move ahead and now you come to one again. Once again, you start from the beginning. You see that, okay, I can find a two. So you start building your sequence, one, two, and now you will once again start from the beginning and try to find a three. Then you find a three, and then you will find a four, and then you stop, right? Similarly, you will traverse to the entire array, 
and you will find out all the sequences that you find. At the end, you will compare all of its length, you find a 2 and you found a sequence of length 4. You will just take the highest value and this will be your answer, correct? So this solution works and it will give you a correct answer every time. But do you see the problem with this approach? What are we doing over here? For every element, we are traversing the array again and again. You will try to find out n plus 1, then you will try to find out n plus 2 and you will go on doing this, right? So this will result in a time complexity of order of n cube. And this is certainly that you don't want. And think about it. What happens if I give you an array something like this? It is such a huge array. You will just keep on traversing this array again and again, right? And you will waste a lot of your time. And your interviewer will be nasty too, right? He won't like this solution. So now you want to optimize it. How can you go about doing that? Usually when you start optimizing solutions, you want to start off with a bigger sample array, right? Then only you can understand that, okay, this is an optimized solution. So this time I am taking such a sample array, right? And when you try to optimize an array, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? You can think that, okay, I want to organize elements in some manner. And how do I organize? That would be sorting. So what happens when I sort this array? As soon as I sort this array, I get something like this. So when I'm sorting elements, I am grouping all of the similar elements together, right? Now, when you try to look at the sorted array carefully, what do you observe over here? You see that, okay, minus one has grouped together and I can see some sequence forming over here, minus one, zero, and then a one, right? Similarly, there is no two. I have a three next. So all the elements near to three will again be grouped together. So I see one more sequence over here and I see a third sequence over here, right? So what just happened? If I iterate over the sorted array, I can try to find out all the sub sequences from this original array, correct? So I start traversing from the beginning. I see that, okay, this is my first sequence. Then I move ahead and I see, okay, this is my second sequence. I just keep on moving ahead until I skip an element. And then if I go further, I see my third sequence, right? So voila, you found out all the sequences that are prevalent in the array. And as a next step, what you can do is you can try to find out its length. So this has a length of three, this has a length of seven, and this has a length of two, right? You just want the length of the longest sequence, correct? So I can return seven as my answer, right? Once again, this approach is wonderful. You were able to bring down your time complexity. But when you are sorting an array, what is the best time complexity you can have? You can have a time complexity of order of n log n, right? And that is by the quick sort technique. And then you just need one iteration to traverse through this entire sorted array and that will happen in order of n time, right? So the time complexity of this solution changes to order of n log n from order of n cube. And that is very good. But your interviewer is still unhappy. He wants a time complexity of order of n. So what can you do to make your interviewer happy? To optimize things further, let us once again take up a sample array, right? And now first of all, try to think. If you are just traversing an array, that itself will take a order of n time, right? So you cannot think about making some manipulations in an array because that will take up more time. But at the same time, if you have to find out a sequence, you want to find out that, okay, I found the element four. I need to find out if a five exists or if I need to find out a three exists. So obviously you have to look up in your array, right? And you cannot iterate again. So what data structure can help you that you can look up in an order of one time? When you think about order of one, that tells you only a hash set or a hash map. Because with these data structures, you can look up any value in order of one time. And if you can somehow store that, okay, I have traversed this value or if I have not traversed this value. Think like this. If I am at an element four, correct? So I need to look up if I can find five in the array and I need to look up if I can find a three in the array, right? And a hash map can help me. Also, you want to make sure that you're not wasting a lot of time. So you need to mark somehow that, okay, I have already done all my work with the element four. I have already done all my work with the element five, right? I have done all my work with the element three. So what you can do is you can create a hash map of all the elements of this array and in your values, you can keep a marker that will tell you 
if you have iterated through this element or not. So this hash map is currently telling me that I haven't traveled any of the elements, right? So all of them are set to false. Now let us start iterating through this array. I start from my element zero, correct? And since I'm starting from zero, that means I have traveled it. So what I'm gonna do is I will update my hash map and set the value of zero to true. That means I have traveled it. What is the next value of zero? That is one. So you look up in your hash map if one is present, you can find a one and you have not traveled it. So what you're gonna do is you will write down that, okay, I found a one. And at the same time in your hash map, you're gonna mark this value as true. That means you have traveled one. Now go on to the next value. You will try to find a two. You cannot find two anywhere over here. So your array does not have a two. You need to stop over here. But at the same time, you started with a zero, right? You can also go in the reverse direction because that will also form a sequence. So what is the next element that you have to look up? You have to look up if a minus one is present. You look up in your map and voila, you see a minus one over here and you have not traveled it. So what I'm gonna do is I will pick up this minus one and I'm gonna mark this minus one as true. Next, you will try to find out if minus two is present. You cannot find a minus two in here and hence you need to stop. So now you have traveled in the front direction and in the back direction. You cannot find any more elements and this is one sequence. You can store its length and that will be three, correct? Now move on. You take your pointer and you move to the next location and that is one. Look up in your map. See the value of one, that is true. That means you are already done with it. You don't want to do anything more. So what I'm gonna do is, I will take this pointer and move to my next value and that is nine. You look up the value nine in your map and that is false. So first of all, I will mark it as true because you are traveling it. And I am gonna try to build a sequence with nine, right? I have to look for 10 now. I cannot find 10 anywhere. So I cannot go forward. I need to look for eight now going backward. I cannot find a eight also. So with nine, I can only form one sequence of the length one. So I will just store this length. I will now move to my next pointer and I move to six. Look up six in your map. You see a false over here. So first of all, I will mark this as true because I'm traveling it. And next, I will try to form my sequence with six. What is the next value of six? That is seven. I cannot find a seven in here. So I need to stop. Now go backwards. I need to find a five. I can find a five in here and its value is false. That means I have not traversed five. So first of all, I will mark it as true because I'm exploring it. And then I will add this five to my sequence. Going forward, I need to search for a four. I cannot find a four anywhere in here. So I just need to stop. I have traversed both in the front and in the back. I cannot find more elements. So this is where my sequence stops and I find the length as two. Now try to move your pointer further. You see a five and this is already set to true. So you have already traversed it. Move ahead. Go to minus one. Look at the value of minus one. That is true again. That means you have covered minus one as well. Now notice that you have only traversed the array just once, right? And that is order of n. And you have calculated all the possible length sequences, correct? What do you need to return? You just need to return me the length of the longest sequence that you can find. And with this three will be your answer. So the important thing to realize over here is that in a brute force solution, what was our problem? We had to iterate the array again and again to find the further elements, right? And what we did is we took an advantage of the hash map data structure to look up those values in an order of one time. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this sample array with me that is passed in as an input parameter to the function. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we initialize a variable longest length that will be returned ultimately as our answer. And also we initialize a hash map that will store if a integer has been explored or not. So as soon as I initialize, I get this kind of a hash map where this column will express if I have explored this integer, correct? So now what I'm gonna do next is, I will start a for loop. And in this loop, I will iterate over each element one by one. Starting off with the first element and that is zero. Since I'm traversing this element, 
what I'm gonna first of all do is I will mark it as true. Now, first I have to check all the elements in the front direction that is 0, 1, 2 and then I will search all the elements in the backward direction that is minus 1, minus 2. So now what I do is I start a while loop and in this while loop I will search for my next num. The next num to 0 would be 1, right? So I see if a 1 is present in the map and the value is false because that tells me that hey 1 has not been explored yet. If this has not been explored, I increment my current length and at the same time, I am going to mark this number as explored. So this will change the value of 1 to true. This while loop will run again and this time I will try to search for the number 2. I cannot find 2 anywhere, right? So now what I am going to do is, I will exit out of this while loop and next what I want to do is, I want to check everything in the reverse direction as well. So now. I will look up the previous number and that is minus 1. I try to look up a minus 1, I can find it and its value is false. That means I have not traveled it. So first of all, I will mark it as traveled and that is true. And then I will increment my current length. That will change to 3, right? Also, at the same time, what I'm going to do next is I will do a print number minus minus. That means I need to look up minus 2 now, right? This while loop will run again and it try to find a minus 2. I cannot find it. Now, I am done with element 0, right? I have traversed in the forward direction and I have traversed in the backward direction. So, just get the maximum length that you found and update your longest length with the max.max function. And this will update your longest length to 3. Similarly, this loop will run again and it will iterate over 1 and then 6 and then minus 1. All these values are already explored except 6, right? So if you start with 6, you're only going to get a length of 1. So you have your longest length that is 3 and that is returned as a final output. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because it traverses through the array only once and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n. That is because we take advantage of a hash map where we store all of our elements. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that if you encounter these kind of problems in an interview, try to ask your interviewer what is the final time complexity that they are expecting. So let us say the interviewer says they want the order of n time complexity and you have to traverse an array of size n. So you know that you will have to traverse the array so you will take order of n time. So how do you solve it? You need to do some lookups obviously, right? And there are only several data structures which can help you to look up in an order of one time complexity. A hash map and a hash set are some such examples, right? So whenever you see this kind of problem, try to ask yourself these questions. How do I look up? What is the final time complexity? And that will lead you to the correct data structure that you have to apply. And if you go down that path, there is a high chance that you will find an optimal solution. So while going through this video, what problems did you face? Have you yourself encountered some problems in interviews or anywhere else where you had to employ such a strategy or you were using the hash map data structure in such a way? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this problem is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Until then, see ya!